When applying for a Canadian study permit, one of the crucial components that can greatly influence the outcome of your application is the study plan. It can make or break your application. A study plan is a written document that outlines your reasons for studying in Canada, your educational goals, and how the chosen program aligns with your future plans. Today, we'll go through the process of crafting a strong study plan by addressing the specific questions that IRCC visa officers require you to answer. At the end of this video, I will share five quick bonus tips, and I think if you can take care of those, you will all already be ahead of 95% of the applicants. My name is Rashid Ali. I'm a licensed Canadian immigration consultant or an RCIC from Milton, Canada. I share information about Canadian visas, immigration and citizenship through this channel. This is generic information and should not be considered legal advice because the circumstances of each applicant are very different. For legal advice, please feel free to schedule a consultation with me. I will leave a link in the description. So in the study plan, you have to answer some specific questions and these questions are usually the same for all visa offices but sometimes there can be minor differences. So do check the study plan requirements for your specific visa office by looking at the visa office specific checklist. And a lot of applicants I've noticed, they don't even look at the visa office checklist. It is very important. You should look at that checklist to see what documents your particular visa office wants you to submit. So the first question in the study plan is, why do you wish to study in Canada in the program for which you have been accepted? To answer this question, you need to provide a clear and convincing explanation of why why you have chosen to study in Canada and why you have specifically selected this program. The purpose of this question is to ensure that your choice of study in Canada is well-founded and aligned with your academic and career goals rather than being driven by some external factors like solely for the purpose of obtaining a postgraduate work permit or applying for PR afterwards. The second question is what is your overall educational goal? This question aims to understand your broader educational aspirations and how the chosen program fits into your long-term plans. Here the visa officer wants to assess whether your chosen program contributes to your academic and career development and if you have a clear path for your studies. An answer to this might be my overall educational goal is to acquire a strong foundation in computer science and gain specialized skills in artificial intelligence and machine learning. I believe that by completing the Bachelor of Computer Science program at XYZ University, I will gain a deep understanding of these fields, allowing me to pursue a career in the tech industry in my home country. The third question is why are you not pursuing a similar program in your country of residence or country of citizenship. This question prompts you to explain why you've chosen to study in Canada instead of pursuing similar educational opportunities in your own country. Here the visa officer wants to understand the unique benefits that studying in Canada offers you compared to your country. They want to ensure that you've considered all your options before making this decision. They also want to make sure that your reasons for coming here are bona fide. So an example to answer this question might be, while there are computer science programs available in my country of residence, none offer the same level of special and access to advanced research resources such as course 1, 2, 3, and 4 that XYZ University provides. So mention the names of courses and subjects that are unique and are lacking in your country. And that is a key point. Throughout your study plan, you must give very specific information. Don't write generic things. If you're someone who thinks who can prepare a strong study permit application by yourself, but still would like a professional to take a second look and review your application before it is submitted, I can provide that service. I can also help you in securing admission in a Canadian educational institute. In fact, it is better that you get in touch with me at this stage so our study permit application is more aligned and stronger. So feel free to get in touch. My email is mentioned above and in the description. The fourth question is, what research have you done in studies in your country of residence or citizenship? This question and the question above are quite similar, so you can answer them together also. Basically, in this section, you're expected to demonstrate that you've thoroughly done your research about educational options available outside of Canada. Let's take another example on how to answer this. I have extensively researched computer science programs in my country, including curriculum offerings, faculty profiles, research opportunities, while there are commendable institutions, they lack the interdisciplinary approach and global partnerships that XYZ University offers. The chance to collaborate with international peers and be a part of the thriving ecosystem at ABC is a unique advantage that I'm certain will enhance my learning experience. So again, you're giving a very specific example. I'm just quoting some quick examples since we're not talking about an actual candidate here. It should be even more specific than this. The fifth question is, how will this program enhance your employment opportunities in 
in your country of residence or country of citizenship. The intention behind asking this question is for the student to prove that they have ample opportunities of employment outside of Canada and thus they will return to their country of citizenship or residence. A good response for this would be where you can demonstrate how your employment or business opportunities will increase. For example, you'll be able to get a promotion or you'll be able to get a better job or work with more clients if you're an entrepreneur and try to give an example of how this particular education in Canada will bridge a knowledge gap or a skill gap that you have right now. Let's look at an example. Studying masters in mechanical engineering will equip me with the latest knowledge in the field of thermodynamics to expand my current business to offer services related to boilers and pressure vessels in the manufacturing industry surrounding our business as this sector is currently growing at a rate of 10% per year in my country. By the way, if you're someone who's looking to visit, study, work or immigrate to Canada or you're already here and looking to help your family and friends, you can apply to join our online community which will be launching later this year where you can connect with like-minded folks such as yourself. Check out the link to apply in the description. The sixth question is what ties do you have to your country of residence or citizenship? This question seeks to understand your connections to your home country and whether you have reasons to return after completing your studies so you don't overstay your visa. An example could be I have deep rooted ties to my home country including my wife and daughter, my parents and three siblings who live in the same city. My family also owns a small engineering services business and I'm committed to applying the skills I gain in Canada to drive innovation and growth within the company. The seventh question is in the case of a minor applicant what are your reasons for studying in Canada? What is your parents or guardians immigration status in their current country of residence? This question applies to minor applicants and requires information about their reasons for studying in Canada and the immigration status of their parents. Since this will not be applicable to all applicants let's move on. The eighth and final question is provide details of your education history, dates when the courses started and ended, the name and address of the school, the course taken, qualification, degree or certificate awarded for the course. Don't take this question too literally. Answer it on a high level. Some people start writing all of the dates, all of the educational institutes, addresses. You're already sharing this information in two different parts of your application. That is the study permit application form and the past educational degrees and transcript section. So just share high level information here and share it in a way that shows the best parts, that shows your strengths. For example, I graduated as a mechanical engineer from IIT with a gold medal or with a CGPA of 3.7 out of 4. So these are the 8 questions that you must answer in your study plan. So here are the 9 tips that will put you ahead of 95% of the study permit applicants. Number 1. Your study plan should be on one page only. Some applicants write a study plan which is several pages long and since the visa officer typically has 12 to 28 minutes to spend on a study permit application, they won't be able to read it and your effort will go to waste and the application may be refused. Secondly, the study plan should only answer these 8 specific specific questions that we looked at in the video. Thirdly, your study plan should not have generic or cliched statements like I'm choosing Canada because of its diverse culture and natural beauty or stuff like my vision is to return to my country to serve it. You should be genuine and authentic and should share specific information, nothing generic and it should highlight your strengths. Fourth tip is that don't get caught up in answering these questions in a sequence they're written or by writing bullet points. Write your study plan in a flow. For example, if it makes sense for you to start with your past education since that is something special something you're proud of start there if it makes sense for you to start your intro with another achievement related to your work maybe start there change the flow of questions write the study plan in three to five paragraphs and make it interesting which brings me to my fifth and final tip read the study plan to yourself in the mirror read it to a friend or family member it should sound interesting it should tell your unique story if it does you've achieved your goal. If you need me to help submit your complete application from start to end or to review the application that you've prepared or to have a consultation call to discuss your case or if you want to download some critical templates and samples that you can use in your application, please get in touch using the email or the links in the description. I have linked a couple of videos related to study permits in the description that you might want to check out. I hope this video was helpful for you. If someone else can benefit from it, please do share with them. Thank you and take care.